Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another, and forgive one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Good morning, West Henrietta Baptist Church, and all our friends on social media. It's again a privilege and a pleasure to invite us to this worship experience. The scripture was ably read by Annette, 
And this morning I want to talk on the subject of forgiveness. I'm not really talking about reconciliation because that's the other side of the coin. The focus, yes, is on forgiveness. The text, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ forgave you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask for your blessing upon our worship experience. We pray that you will give us a receptive heart and mind. May we be given a chance to reflect on our lives. And where there is a need to forgive someone this morning, we pray for your strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Forgiveness. Maybe you have been badly hurt by someone or someone abused you or they have used their power against you. Maybe someone has ripped you off or robbed you of a prized possession. Maybe someone has taken the life of a loved one, or someone has injured a loved one. Maybe someone has lied on you, cheated on you, or slandered you. Maybe it's just a lot of wrongs that have been done to you by numerous people and you're feeling insulted, you're feeling angry, and you're feeling bitter. Maybe you have malice someone or some person for a good while now because they have sinned hideously against you. Yes, I can hear some people saying, I'm feeling rage, anger, and shouting welling up inside me because of what someone has done to me. This sermon is not about whether or not the offender has acknowledged offending you. It is not about the offender's remorse, penitence, apology, or lack thereof. There comes a moment and a time when we all give and receive forgiveness in order to move on with our lives. Forgiveness is not something you are dependent on others to do. It is yours to give. Allow me then to make the following three points about forgiveness. 
First, forgiveness is part of God's plan. And God is the model of forgiveness. God's plan to save mankind is not by means of any good thing we could do. The gift of forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life is called salvation. Jesus Christ has already paid the price for these gifts for you and for me through his death on the cross. The word Paul uses to describe forgiveness is actually a grace word. He argues that because God has graciously given us forgiveness, life, and salvation, we are to graciously give to others by forgiving them. It means then that forgiveness is primarily important to believers in Christ because believers are forgiven people. An unforgiven spirit is the devil's playground and before long it becomes the Christian's battleground. If someone hurts you, either deliberately or unintentionally, and we do not forgive them, then we begin to develop bitterness within, which hardens the heart. Matthew 6, verses 12 and 14. Forgiveness means to release someone from a debt. It means to make a deliberate decision, a deliberate choice to take someone whom you have been holding in debt, holding in resentment and bitterness, and release them. When you forgive a person you release him or her from a debt to you. Saying your debt to me has been forgiven. Your debt to me has been paid by Jesus Christ. Our Savior. You see, the truth is that all of us need forgiveness we have a responsibility to responsibility to forgive somebody you see forgiveness is the gift we give when we erase someone's sin from our personal ledger of wrongs against us the page in our personal ledger becomes blank. It's blank. You have erased it. Countless persecuted people throughout history, from the earliest Christian believers to our time, have learned forgiveness. And Jesus presented his disciples with probably the most difficult responsibility to love and forgive those who persecuted them. Forgiveness then is a new way of looking at the offender. We say goodbye to the old paradigm, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And the new paradigm is to see your offender for what they can be. 
and for what they were intended to be rather than as they are. Never stop trying to love and to forgive. Aspire to the, the height of forgiveness. Desire the thirst and the hunger to forgive. Those who hurt you, those who trespass against you, and those who have done you all other manner of evil. The second point is that Forgiveness is not opposed to justice. You can forgive someone and still seek justice. Let's admit to some truth here. Forgiveness doesn't come easily for some people. It is harder to forgive when the hurt is big. There was this American family of four who went to India as missionaries. Mother, father, and two children. And having been there for a little while, dad and the four-year-old went on the mission field. A day passed and they never came home. But after some time passed, they found the charred bodies in their jeep. They were murdered by somebody. The grieving wife and mother looked at the little daughter. And she said, I can forgive them for the murder, but I cannot forgive their sin. They will receive justice from God himself. Anyone listening to my voice this morning has a similar experience. One day God will make it right for that mother. And one day God will make it right for those of you who are waiting for justice. Teardrops may all that you know in your grief. Friends may fail you. Family may fail you. The law courts may fail to give you justice. But there is coming a day, and, I, and I'm saying there is coming a day when that perfect judge, God himself, will impose judgment upon mankind. All eyes shall see him. You see, justice for God is a process that ends in a decision about whether a person is worthy of his or her reward. It is hard to forgive when the offender refuses to acknowledge what they have done. Listen, many people have had sleepless nights wrestling with the option between forgiveness and justice. Well, it doesn't have to be so. You can have forgiveness and justice. There are some family members and some people may offend you and you may not want to take them to the court. You may not want any um, intervention of the law. I can understand that. However, I hasten to a to advise that you should seek justice if the unjust situation is continuing to impact you or those who are in need of your protection. Forgiveness is not opposed to self-protection. 
You can forgive someone and still act to protect yourself and other vulnerable persons. Let me make it a little clearer. Forgiveness is not opposed to broken relationships. Forgiveness is not opposed to remembering what has been done to you. You can forgive even if you can't bring yourself to forget some things you will never forget. And I will add, forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. Sometimes you have to forgive and move on with your life so as to protect yourself physically and emotionally. But I would advise also, turn your sorrow, your grief, your pain, and your bitterness over to God's justice. Hebrews 10 verse 30 reads, For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. When we look at the cross, we see the justice, the love, the wisdom, and the power of God. Is there anything too hard for you to turn over to God? And finally, forgiveness is a display of strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you forgive, you are displaying strength. Let me repeat. Forgiveness is an act of strength, not weakness. When somebody hurts you, it is easy to stay angry with them. For there are a number of persons who enjoy being angry. It does something for you. Because that's the easy way out. You stay angry. And you don't have to do the hard work of forgiving. But Paul exhorts us. Just as Christ has forgiven you. You must forgive others. That's hard work. That's challenging. Just as Christ has forgiven you, you must forgive yourself. There are some people who find it very hard to forgive themselves. They are hard on themselves. So I'm saying stop being so hard on yourself. Stop blaming yourself. Forgiveness is a choice. You may need to work through your mistakes. And here is the bright side of it is that we often do the best we can with the tools we have at a given time. Ask the Savior to help you. You need to pray for yourself and you need to ask others to pray for you. Have you ever noticed how it is the people you love the most who hurt you the most? You might have done some of your worst hurt to people who love you the most. You remember the story in Luke 15 of a young lad who went to his father and asked his father to give him his portion of the property because he wants to leave home. And so the father gave him all that belonged to him. 
He sold the property, he sold the animals, and he left with the money. But his father didn't get a court order to force him to stay home. He didn't yell and threaten him. He did nothing to stop him from doing what he decided to do. He went away and he wasted the money, living it up. And after a while, he had nothing left. So he decided to go home to see his dad. The point I'm making here is that he broke his father's heart badly. And when he returned home in shame and approaching his dad, his dad hugged him, saying, this is my son who was dead now alive this is my son who was lost and is now found you see his father did not put him on probation he didn't ask his son to promise not to mess up again he forgave him can you forgive someone this morning maybe an old enemy Someone who has been your enemy for years. Someone with whom you have not spoken for years. Or someone for whom you are carrying a grudge for years. You see, forgiveness is not a display of weakness. It is a display of kindness and strength. A woman wrote in her journal, One night I prayed to God in tears. I asked for forgiveness, for hating my enemies, and for allowing hatred to control my life. Instantly God took away my frustration, took away my hopelessness, He took away my hatred and replaced it with love. See, it takes strength in the Lord to pray for your enemies. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There is no limit to our strength in the Lord. In fact, our strength in the Lord comes from our confidence in the Lord's strength. And our Lord's strength is overwhelming and limitless. Today is a good day to forgive somebody. Today is a good day to release somebody. May the Spirit of God overshadow you to the point where you are willing to release somebody and when you have released them you feel relief yourself you can say yes my chains fell off and my heart is free praise god my heart is free is there someone at this time listening to me who is struggling with hatred and malice and bitterness. Those are major roadblocks to forgiveness. And there are those who go around day after day, year after year, with a spirit of unforgiveness, with the burden of unforgiveness. They go to the supermarket with that burden. They go to the family reunion with that burden. They go to class 
reunions with that burden. They go to birthday parties with that burden. How long? How much longer can you bear that weight? They go to church with the burden of unforgiveness. They are the communion table with the burden of, un of unforgiveness. When they hear it, it says over and over that the Lord Jesus forgives you of all sins. Therefore, you are to forgive because you have been forgiven. I pray that somebody be set free this morning from their spirit of unforgiveness. You see, God in his love has erased your confession. God in his mercy has Remove his wrath from us. God in his mercy has raised us from death to life. God has been incredibly kind and compassionate to us. And because God has forgiven us, we have a reason and strength to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Those who have offended and those who have hurt us. Never stop trying to love and to forgive. Aspire to the heights of forgiveness. Desire the thirst and the hunger to forgive. It will set you free. It will unburden you. It will give you joy and the peace of God which passes all understanding. But you cannot do it on your own. You need the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. A verse of a song says, Ask the Savior to help you to comfort, strengthen, and heal you. He is willing to aid you. And he will carry you through. Amen.